like Brody C and such. Should just be able to make it happen, but well, who knows anymore? Either way, we are getting into the action, but perhaps just sneak in a quick prediction before it all kicks off. I feel like Zenex is going to close this out 2-0, but it is going to be a close affair. Let's see, though, if CX can do anything differently. Obviously, as you did say, Brody C, he is definitely the man to watch in a lot of those scenarios. Great aim, great individual player, knows how to ward off the pushes in towards the bomb sites. But let's see if Xenex can kick it off and get a first one on the board. They will take down Astro. That's a lot of mid control already snapped up now. They can burst in towards the bomb site. Hawkins swallows it up with a frag on towards Josh. And this isn't looking great for CX. Bad positions across the board from the CT side, really getting caught out of mood, and then Josh just completely none the wise that the connector split can come on through. It's completely disastrous. Rezu can try and get himself one, but that's bare minimum now, leaving just Brody C to do the work on Ticket Booth. No one is responding to him, but at the same time, why slap a band-aid on him? He's just pretty much dead set useless. He's one man up against four. It's gonna be so tough for him to have an impact. They plant the bomb in a situation that he can't even get remotely close to. He's just searching for a couple of headshots here and there, searching for a frag. Yeah, we'll claim one though on towards NK. And see what more he can do in this elevated angle over by ticket box. Waiting for the peak to come through. We'll just be hammering down the trigger. A flurry of bullets coming out, but really can't do too much. Duck will finish him in the end. Xenex do open it with a pistol. Now, obviously, as well, you imagine they're going to link these up, claim the next two rounds for free. CX need to have something prepared when they get to that first rifle round. Xenex fairly heavily into rifles, actually. Only two SMGs are going to be coming out. NK will go for the MAC 10, the biggie smalls. And we'll see Muffin with the UMP as well. And then three rifles on the board in those AKs. Just going to be holding back, playing their angles, hoping the push from ZX will be on display. Pick them off with some easy headshots and map this round up very quickly. Yeah, CX are looking for the longer range duels, though. They're kind of hoping that a headshot will present itself in the form of a trusty old one dig. But it's it's very kind of wish-washy, right? Sometimes it works, sometimes it just doesn't get anything done at all. The question is, what is going to happen? Rezu fires off two shots, make that a third, make that a fourth, make that a fifth. None of it is going his way, none of it is landing. And that just means that Xenex gain more and more ground, which, yeah, close range, you can kind of let rip, you can try and be the, the next to pre, but unfortunately, for the most part, that's just too much to ask. Yeah, really you don't expect too much out of them into this. It's basically just a deco. Just hoping they can connect something, maybe force out some rebuys on Xenex, stop them from building up so much money with the SMGs. But it's not going to be too much to write home about, ideally. They should get picked off fairly easily. They transferred a fair bit of damage, actually. Two players are going to be weak. Hawkins and NK have already received a bit of a dent. But will they fall, or will they just make it through a little bit shaken up? So there's a question to be asked. Rezu is going to at least find one on towards NK, so a bare minimum, a frag in hand, but for the most part, Muffin is also going to look for some money, so yet again, there's that kind of trade back response. But going to deliver a bit of a flying kick almost on towards Astro, and the frags are falling into place. It's a textbook round for Xenex. They get themselves the 2 0, and they continue to pedestal their way forward as they look for their third, and their third should be fairly uninterrupted as well, because this time, we aren't really going to see any deagles. I'd be surprised if we see anything at all. Maybe a light P250, but that seems the, the maximum amount of dollar you really need to spend. Yeah, they're actually going to go for the you know the opt-out. They're going to Brexit their way out of the round and just scavenge the economy. Let's see how this goes. Obviously, Xenex, they have those SMGs still in play on NK and Muffin. They're just going to wrap up the cash in this final round, claim that 3-0. That's when the real game begins. That's when things have to switch up. CX obviously with the cash in their bank. They're going to try and get that all past an Astro. They're going to have to move towards the bottom board. Lots of utility to play with. They are playing this very lax control towards mid though, but let's see if that will actually follow through into the rifle lines. Yeah, CX still just trying to trade on the free market, but nothing is really working out for them. We just see a couple of picks coming all across the board, but only one going in favour of CEX, which means that, yeah, for the most part, it's just money to be made for one team, lossless for the other, which never really is going to be something you want to shine too big of a light on. So now CX, they tried. They failed. Now they do have that MAC-10 on towards Brody C, which if you can connect some shots with that, then that does turn a negative into a positive. But for now, it is just a double negative. Two wrongs don't make a right. But two left turns do make a right. Push coming through towards that B-bomb site there. They have been able to secure it. I've been informed it's actually three left turns. <laughs> Brody C is going to be holding the angle here with the MAC-10, obviously the backup of his teammate, Ressi. As they just try and hold these angles, Try and find exit frags if possible. That's the best case scenario. They're not really going to get too much else out of it. Xenex should really just exit together here. Hold on to those weapons. Don't, you know, have to go for the rebuys. And they'll be fine for the next round. Yeah, pretty much good stuff for now. Just waiting to see if that MAC-10 is going to get any work done at all. I think, you know, it's sort of kind of that mixture of do they actually want to save it? Do they want to just go forward or push? You know, Rezu, you can already see him kind of 
Just beginning his journey, vine by vine, swings his way forward. Rocking in a Tarzan almost as he begins to be ever, ever so mobile, but man, nothing is going through. They're actually going to stick that defuse, try and see if they can bait that one out, and it will enable Rezu to find one with the Mac 10, so that's money in the bank. But Hawkins, he's eventually going to wipe now, but Rezu, he's getting a rifle. This, this is good. Yeah, he gets away with it. We'll be able to hold on to it, no one is going to punish him. So he'll save some cash into this first full buy. Either side are going to have weapons to play with now, though. The buyers will be coming out. We see Duck. The warping IGL now for the side of Xenix. He will don the weapon. And we also see Astro going to be buying one up. Now, Astro in the past is a very effective warper. He's very flamboyant. So let's see if that will be coming out. We need to see him really picking up these frags this time. Try and get some early picks. Get those impact frags on the board to help out CX. Yeah, big round. All in all for CX. A time for them to poison themselves back in this game. Put them in a position of success rather than failure. They don't want to be walking away with a sour note tarnish on their record on this first map and this kind of first five six rounds all really a big part of this muffin searching with the deagle waiting to see okay am i gonna get myself something here or do i just want to push forward and start to really utilize the smg that i've got in hand hawkins is just gonna be checking out towards underpass just clearing out the map being very secular in his approach right just wants to clear out each and every portion of this map to make sure that they have maximum map control on their t side before they end up pushing themselves into position so i think this is smart from xenix they're just waiting to see okay a CX, how pushy are they going to be? Can we shove them back in any direction? Can we try and bait out any sort of response? Get ourselves a first pick. But this has to get transformed. This has to eventually turn into a push and away from a default. Yeah, they're going to be backing off. Reposition out of that default. Obviously, as you said, no one peeked into them. They didn't get an opening frag. Weren't given anything to try and make their lives a little bit easier into this. So now with the utility they have, they'll go for their smoke setup, burst their way out towards the A-bomb site, hopefully try and find something to help them out here. Could be beneficial, but depends on the timings. One smoke already going out relatively early, landing towards stairs. That is going to be a bit of a giveaway, allowing just a few more seconds of rotate the time. CT is going to find itself completely blocked off as well, so it's your bog standard execute. But one cut position isn't actually being covered, and that's connector, which means Brody C could actually do some serious work here. But that little cross smoke finally does land, which is always going to be a bit of a saving grace. Brody towards stairs as well. They're playing around the elevator angle, still searching, but nades landing out for a lot of damage. Spread them off to the CT side. Oh, Resu. He should have been taken now, but actually survives on 10 HP. As he was down for that push up, and they do punish him. You can see Josh as well going to arrive on the scene, tiptoeing through the smoke. Hoping to try and find another frag to aid his team and this retake. They do have the man advantage, but the CTs are in a little bit of an awkward situation. The CTs have good after plants. There's Duck coming with that frag on towards Brody C as well, taking him down. Josh gets a follow up frag though, on to the filler. Duck still just ripping his way through them. The big tails come out, they're just going to be harmed for the hard hold on the bomb, and they will actually get this round. Yeah, unfortunately for the, the facts of the article, overcome him, he's going to get taken down. And then NCX can pull through that fuse, and even just Hawkins to run away and keep the AWP. 0.5 seconds, uh, very close. Had to go for that fully commit. Wow, that was uh, nicely done by CX, obviously, on the retake. They beat out Xenex in a very important round. They try and set some things up. Xenex, though, have the possibility to come straight back into the fold. Obviously, they have money to get this next buyout. They still have the AWP. This time it will be done by NK. He had the mid spawn. He's going to try and take the aggression. Is he going to be able to find anything here? Heavy focus towards connector early. Is he aware of Astro's position? Yeah, it's a big question. But for now, I'm, I'm kind of drawn towards Rezu as well. Let's see what he can do from short because he's in an angle where he could be caught out. That's a nade. You don't want to throw it yourself when it takes 50 HP away from him. Brody, not what you want to do. That's that's uncomfortable. It's rough for him though, but yeah, he's going to have to lick his wounds, play off the back of that. It's a round on the ball for CX after all, they want to push forward. But mistakes can lead to a bit of mid-control for Xenix. If they choose to go for this push here, they've got the grace of that AWP. That's good map control for them. That's a segue on towards this B site. Don't drive segways on sand though, because they don't work. So. Talking from experience there. Yeah. Tough times. Life lessons from Jackie, folks. Don't do it. Don't work out for you. One to three, though. Either way, Xenex still playing ever so patiently. Just waiting for the time time to strike. Doesn't really have too much information, though, so I think this patience is, is almost overused now for them, right? They don't need it. They're not gaining anything from doing it. All they're doing is sapping away the time that they have on the site itself. So it's almost like spending a commodity against yourself. It's just there is no net gain. Brody C sitting tight towards connector as well. Could really be the final man in the coffin, so to speak, for Xenex, because when they push on into him, he just drops them dead, you wait for Josh to come in from behind, and bit by bit, it falls into place. It's so, so rough on this T side now. He pushes now, come their way out towards the bomb site. NK going to find that frag off on towards Josh, takes him down, leaving them in a free versus two as they start to flood out into the bomb site. 
Can they actually pick up these kills though? Pete goes over. Liam hoping to find something, but all he receives is a bullet straight from Muffin into his head. Railing him down, leaving the freshman on the site, looking a bit confused. And Filler will eliminate him. The ramp push pretty much completely saved that strategy because the connector completely fell apart, but Muffin was able to find those quick picks from ramp as he walked on through, and that got him the headshots required to pull through. So ZX, they, they find the reset in effect. They crush the economy of ZX, and they say, you know what, go back, try and find something second hand. Some deagles, some 5.7s, but that's the best they can do. But will it be broken? Oh, I'll have to get Rattel on it otherwise. You know the deal. Policy no applies. No returns, mate. Sad times. That'll be a grand, please. But let's see how it goes. Obviously, as the push comes in, early aggression towards mid here from Hawkins. Hoping to find something out of his hawk eyes, his eagle vision. But no one is there as they tiptoe their way through. Trying to gain that short control, then go for the late round explosion towards that B bomb site. NK will be just checking it out. We'll find a frag on towards Brody. Will do so. Shuts it down. Another frag as well from Duck this time. Over on towards Astro, absolutely miles away, leaving them already five. Not a great spot to be in, and already didn't have an advantage in terms of weaponry. And they are going to start getting picked off. Yeah, bit by bit, damage is being done, and that's kind of best case scenario for them. Everything, yet again, working out in their favour. Do see one pick at least on towards Hawkins, but that is very much the definition of how to scrape the bottom of the barrel for something, right? One frag doesn't change anything on the economy of Xenic. Oh, nicely done though, Duck. We'll find that headshot as well. On towards Liam. So that is a fairly flawless round coming out. As the buyers will start to come through once again. Obviously only losing one member there. It's not all doom and gloom as they have five rounds on the board. CEX site finally have money to play with once again. They've saved their pennies and they have been able to get a buyout. Right, good stuff so far, but can they make it work? That's the big question. They're already getting that early smoke down, but it's not early enough as it is already going to be such aggression. Such a grit coming out from Xenix. They just go further forward. Hawkins, the madman right now, finds the headshot on towards Astro. Finally, was shut down by Brody C, but it's not enough. The bomb is planted. You can have four versus four retake. Josh is in position to try and play up on a pedestal almost elevated, but the minute he goes up even further, well, it's one ladder, one climb too high. Liam towards there is trying to make something work. Rezu towards CT as well picks up just another. But arguably Xenix, they still have a playmaking opportunity here. Look at Filler from Shadow. No one is there to cut him off just yet. They have to push him. But when they do, he's there to do the work. Oh, the headshot for Supreme. Filler, nice work done. He just tried to kill them. Hungry for more as well. Finds a follow-up frag on towards Liam, taking him down very, very easily. Xenix, they will pick it up. A very close round. Four rebuys are forced out onto the side of their team. But they do keep this pain train rolling. Looking good so far, obviously, as well. CX off the back of that are once again forced into an eco. Not a great situation to be in. I'm going to go for the armor buyers. We'll just be upgrading to two PT50s, 157 as well, and a Deagle on Brody C. Someone who's actually been very quiet so far throughout this matchup. I want to see more from Brody because in the past he has really been the firepower, the driving force behind that CX. Yeah, we just want to see more of that magic, right? More of that flair, but none of it right now is just there. There's no kind of sparkling dust or magic bean that saves the day. If anything, CX, they are just surely right now the second hand version of their team. And that's not good enough. That's not good enough against them. They are the team that fly on in and take advantage of you when you're at your weakest. We've seen it time and time again. We saw close matchups against Endpoint on Cobblestone. NK just deciding, you know what, I've got a Deagle. I'm at a 1 versus 4. I'm still going to take you down. In this round, at least, it is just going to be fair. Already opening up with a slow but steady headshot on towards Brody C. Xenix, the perk for them here is they got four four rebites in the last round. But if they keep it clean in this round against the Eco, that's all replenished. Now, Taylor, already in the 5 versus 4. See, yeah, uh, getting picked off from range. Good use of distance from Xenix. They were able to just mop them up very easily. NK is just dispatching everyone that's in front of him right now. Still, just yet again, CX find themselves willing to be passengers on this train as Xenix just flow on by. It's a district line for them. If they are happy as anything in the way this match is going for them. This is going to be a 1-7 to seven score line unless we see something absolutely mad from Astro and Rezu, which is you know, a pretty big impossible chant at this point for them with just those pistols. 1-7, to seven, yes, it's, it's comeback. We've actually seen it happen tonight, but that was due to a lot of mixed reasons and a completely different style of players. In this matchup, it feels like it's not kind of loose rounds that are going back and forwards close to the end. What it looks like is just a bit of a joke at this point. Yep, everyone is just getting absolutely annihilated. Rezu, obviously last man left standing, 5-7, playing from this close range by the shelf. Uh, they're going to push into him, but easy for Hawkins to find the angle. We'll kill him, it's another round on the board already now for Xenix. 
And usually their T-sides are where they're at their weakest. They're a team that never really has the most predominant T-halves. They're always very dominant in their CT-halves. They have fantastic flair, great prowess when it comes to locking down their sites. This time around, though, already seven rounds locked up. This is scary when you think about that. Yeah, I think, you know, you look at experience for them. A lot of these players aren't very experienced. You have kind of the lands on the back of NK in terms of international stuff, but even then, that doesn't scream, you know, bucket loads of knowledge on the game. Yeah, they know some stuff, but I look at CX and go, surely they should have a little more adaptation to them, a little bit more variance into their play. It just doesn't seem to go to plan. Liam is going to start strong, picks up a double kill, in fact, with the AWP, but a trade coming towards short is almost expected at this point. Look at Rezu, but no, he manages to get behind him. Hawkins completely rushed away in this one. Rezu still going, a double kill for him, but a spray down. Menke looks for a triple kill as well, pulling on through, but no! Brody C snaps back, denies it after a bit of a whiff on that first final spray. And now there is support. You do love him. Big fan of the pause. Uh, wonder what the issue will be there, or if it is actually going to be a technical pause. Trying to work some things out, talking about some stuff. I'm going to go out and say that Xenix, it's probably a bit too early for attack pause. I don't have any problems if it's too early. Is I'd rather too early than too late, especially considering kind of the, the norm of calling pauses within UKCS. But yeah, I think that this is probably you know, almost guaranteed to be a tech issue right after what? CX getting two rounds, it's, it's nothing really too scary for them. They know what they're coming up against. They know they have time to move. You know, we're looking at more like, what, 7-3, 7-4 before that pause comes in. Yeah, if it even is going to be utilized at all to try and work out what they want to do. Obviously, they've been looking very dominant right now. That's kind of a one-off round with CX being able to lock that down. They still have money to pay off on the side of Xenex. The buyers will be coming out once again. I can afford that up on Duck as well, so it's not a big deal. Obviously, you can see the money is flourishing on their side. Yeah, talk about Duck. We did kind of talk quite highly of him, and there's a reason for it. Yet again, it's that kind of double-digit comment. He's the only man to be there, stepping up to the play for Xenix. He's doing so much of the work for his team. Yeah. Taking a dig, looking at those stats. Anything stick out to you? Sliding in there, mate. Yeah, I mean, NK's had a couple of frags, but uh, a lot of them... There's only been one or two that have been really impactful impact frags to actually open up rounds. The rest of them have been kind of just sat padding towards the end there. Like you saw him get that double kill at the end of the last round. Didn't really mean too much. Hawkins has had some fairly good openers going in for the entries. He's been able to unlock a couple of sites, do some good work there. But with Duck back on the AWP now, they have you take this once again. They still have the buy coming out. Are they going to have the drop on CX into that round? That's the question. CX play it out the same style. They allow them to gain that mid control early. They're not really capitalizing on the choke points. That's the thing. They're giving up so much mid control, but they're not capitalizing on the choke points. So Xenex are just being able to slip their way in. It's going to be interesting to see if that will happen once more. I also kind of want to see, I think, you know, good old Kelly, our wonderful number one observer in the UK, just pointed out to us a fun little stat there, which was that Muffin is actually the, the prime man support figure for Xenex right now. Had the most flashes out of everyone in the server. Constantly been there to throw those flashes, try and blind people down and have that impact, allowing players like Doc to then slide in and get those entry frags. Well, I think someone needs to call the police because flashing's illegal, flakes. You're not supposed to run around doing that. And it's a bit disgusting, really, to be honest with you. I don't think it's funny. It's despicable stuff, dude, honestly. Yep. Still want to pause. Curious on what the issue is, generally. I think the problem is, though, that, you know, fun fact, production can't talk to us right now because the, uh, the laptop they're using is running out of battery. So that's a, that's a fun fact for you. You've ruined the studio magic. Yeah, it's all gone now. It's all over. There is no studio magic anymore. Stardust is all but non-existent. Two to seven is the score, I know. Is this the comeback for CX? Is Every this the road? There's a pause. <laughs> <laughs> we should just play Shoot and Star by Backriders on the screen. <laughs> with just nothing else. <laughs> can we get that in studio? Can you can you help? Can you make this happen? Ten minutes? I don't. Know. Well, I mean, we could still be in this pause in ten minutes' time. That could um, happen. Look at the reflection there. It's nice, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Ten out of ten reflections. Oh. Uh, oh, unpause has been cool. Let's go. Let's get ourselves back into the action. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Production, just uh, let it slip a bit there. We talked about flashing, guys. It's, it's not okay. Right then. Let's see how this one is going to go down. 7 2. Who's up for a brew as we get into this? Astro going to be chugging down the Iron Brew there, looking towards the top of mid, trying to find himself that opening AWP pick. If it presents itself, Hawkins, of course, will be the man to try and find that one. NK just going to try and flash him out, but in fact, they don't play off the back of that. They just waste that dollar just to gain a bit of presence and just show that, you know, they do have some sort of existence towards mid right now. Muffin just trying to play the role of ET, trying to find home, so to speak. 
operation this moment, searching to see, okay, if there's someone pushing, just let them know that I exist too. Talking about the push. It's taking place. Rezzy, Liam, both trying to go forward for it. Jumping the way out. On towards the bomb site now. Trying to reposition. Now I'll just force the back off as well. But you can see the play from Filler. He's going to be the key man. Making his way through Palace. Obviously the backstab. There's only one player situation towards the bomb site. If he gets that opening frag on towards Josh. Really opens things up. Rezu has started to reposition out. And does arrive on the scene. There is a flashbang over. I think he just threw a flash. Oh, there's a smoke towards mid. To try and give the idea that they might be going towards mid. So yeah, you can see that smoke there being utilised. Trying to keep the players busy. He's making them think that, okay, might still be a mid play late into the round. Now the utility they have left. Smoke off the site. Go for the execute out. See if they can find their way in. They're going to have to wait as well though. Because the Molotov just been used. And time is taken away. Yeah, and that smoke towards mid suddenly faded. Now bro, you see his attention has been drawn back towards the site. The smokes are going to go down. Flashes are all but popping. But they're not doing anything at all. They're having to die through just another Molotov. Duck there with the ADP. Trying to find the flick. Deals with the off angle that's being held by Rezo. He's deleted from existence. Filler, just another one for him. Bit by bit, this chess game is going all in favour of Xanax. Five versus three. Low HP on the entirety of this T side. But they are trading left, right and centre. All of these blows going in one direction. An uppercut to the chin of Liam. Astro, the last man standing towards Connector, he's completely blind, flicks away for a quick second, but he's all but done. Yeah, he will save the up, but that's all he's going to be able to get away with today. They are actually going to be hunting him, so he's still doing work, trying to wean out the economy of Xenex, but obviously they have so much money to play with, and now locking out their eighth round on the board already. That is so huge on their T-half, just looking unstoppable right now. Xenex really coming in, packing a punch. And just getting the job done. And the problem here is the economy now, CX, right? They're really going to be hurting. They're effectively a bankrupt company for all intents and purposes because what are they going to do here? They've got that ADP, ADP on Astro, but they're going to have to make the decision of, okay, do we actually have enough money to go kind of guns blazing this one? The answer, pretty much no. 3,300, 1,850, 2,050. That's not enough at all. You're leaving Astro up there in the sky saying, Astro, you're our god, mate. We're all just peasants down here with CZs and Deagles. Yeah, he's got a few pennies flying about the place, hasn't he? Liam does get the UMP though, so that's at least some sort of silver lining, but still a bit of a rough one. Needs to be oh, polished down a little bit, you could say. Astro gonna try and make a play over towards B, but the risk here is if he dies so early on, his impact is so limited, but he found the first pick, but ooh, duck so close to the collateral, but Astro still doing work with this AWP. If he does enough here, they could get this round. Slips away though, get punished by a filler as you go to the entry and towards the bomb site. Three versus three, they can get the bomb plant and the redeeming factor is they're already on the scene. They have the dark the plants now utilised, they can ward off the push coming in from CEX. They are going to try and work together, they have flashbangs, they have utility. But let's see if they can slip in and try and retake this. Obviously a massive disadvantage in terms of their arsenal. Priority seat, playing slow and carefully, looking to clear out these angles of the deagle. He doesn't want to go for any mad like flick with the deagle. Instead, he wants to be well prepared. But the problem with that, preparation takes time. And what comes with time, well, a bomb explosion in the case of Counter-Strike. That clock is going to keep on ticking. That bomb is eventually going to find its way popping. CX, so yeah, they've got to go fast if they want to make this one happen. And Josh is going to come from short. We'll be there to be a support. You figure it's going to be a double kill across the board. But Duck is still standing. Duck trying to clutch it out. But Brody C with the deagle. Preparation pays off. But a long diffuse. Yeah, it's taking a while, but he will get it. Get there in the end. Ooh. Got the stamina. Yeah. You know, as the double setup now can be utilised by CEX as well. They've scavenged those weapons. They have managed to go for the rebuys into this. They can drop that out. So you're going to see Liam and Astro. Obviously, going to be taking those. Actually, no. Shuffling it around a little bit. No, it will be Liam going for the second re -up. Right. Over on the side of Xenex, though, you have the AWP once again on Duck. They still have money to buy out. Their economy was looking healthy, so it's not too bad. Asher comes in with the opening frag going towards Hawkins, wants to try and stunt their growth any further as they go to the A play. They slip their way out. Muffin bounding around, trying to find these frags. What can he actually do? Nothing is seen. Brody C is going to shut him down. Still trying to play it over from the bottom of the stair. I was having a bit of a struggle in terms of his climb, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. He can stand as low as he wants to be because he's still able to do work. He's still holding them off. NK going to try and pop off. Finds himself one in return. Duck going for the no-script. Lands it on towards Brody C right in the shoulder. Perfect little frag for him because now NK can secure the plant towards short. But Xenix, they have to be so, so smart in the way they approach this. They need to back off. But they're not. Liam getting a free pick on towards NK. It's so difficult now. Duck has his work cut out for him. Josh running right at the back of the site. This is not possible. Josh is going to secure another round for CX. The comeback, it's on. You've been draking, Josh. Have a bit of that, mate. 
There you have it. Double of setup will still be utilized. Obviously, they were able to scavenge that one through. They can still hold that out. It was looking good. A round that went very close for comfort. Xenex as well on the overextend. They got punished because of it. Liam had that secondary up on short. Was able to spot them out. Wean them down a little bit. And things just got a bit awkward for them. Now back into this round where they just don't have much to play with. They are just basically going to go for the burst play. Try and just achieve whatever you can. Overwhelm your opponents if possible. After they turn the close angle. Nice headshot there off on towards filler. Quick reactions. And they basically just have to go for this. Got to go fast. The words that spring to mind. Liam already just picking them apart. Christmas present, the CX are very frantic to unwrap. The Xenex just caught with pretty much nothing left at this point. Pistols, Tech 9, they're all well and good, but you have to gap close. You can't just try and pull this long of a range because Astro, all of his longer range rifles will just mow you down. Yeah, it's true. You will just get absolutely annihilated from distance. That's where they're going to be playing like their best with those advantageous weapons in this scenario. So it's hard for Xenex right now, but. This is one round of many. Try and get this one cleaned out. Obviously, take yourself into round 14. And then you need to try and lock things down at that point. Try and keep riding off this high there. They've already got eight rounds on the board. That's pretty good for them. Yeah, I think they're going to be happy as anything either way now. But you also have to raise the question of, yeah, it could be good for them. But shouldn't they feel like they deserve more almost? They had such a, a decimating start. But you could argue they do. It's true. Definitely... A chance for them to do more. But we're gonna have to wait and see how that goes as the fires come out. Is this where Xenex return to form? Is this where they make their way through and actually start to lock the game down? Or is this gonna be the CEX show? Is this where CEX now finally start to get the wind under their wings and start to lock things down? Who knows? That is going to be the question. Anyway, Hawkins wants to lead the charge. Gets up close and personal, playing by ramp. You can see just waiting around the smoke here, expecting the push to come through. But nothing will unfold just yet. The spam comes through from Brody C. Isn't going to connect. Hawkins, able to tiptoe his way in towards the bombsite now, though. He has an opening. He is going to be the man to instigate things. But spots out by Brody C. Gets eliminated. This really holds them back. Yeah, puts them on a bit of a leash yet again. It's someone there just with a chain pulling them further and further back by second. Unfortunately, they will be a pickaxe swinging to try and crack that apart. But do they have the time? Do they have the willpower, the fortitude, all these things required to make it happen? Zenex still fighting towards the top mid now. They're going to go further down. Duck is going to be there to try and rally the troops and lead this charge. But they're still searching for those elements. Right now, a quick push through connector. That's not what counts. But the peak from Philip certainly does. Gets them that opening frag on towards Brody C. Gets them control of the site. Josh is going to walk through a smoke into a connector where they know the T side are standing. So a very odd decision from him. But nonetheless, it's a bomb plant. But Rezzy towards Ticket Booth. Still, still shut down the ground. He's trying to find the frag. Struggling though as he just hammers down the trigger. But it's not really going that way. Filler as well. Obviously the thing is, he basically just has to stay alive. Just stay hidden in Palace and they win the round. Gets taken down by Liam though. Liam goes for the peak. Absolutely obliterates him with the orc here. NK. Rides on him now to try and do the work. We'll find the headshot off on towards Liam. You see Duck and Co still fighting their way for it. Headshot connect off on towards Rezu. Astro falls as well. Ooh, that's damaging. They're going to scurry, try and grab that up if possible. But they don't get away with it. So no double up setup being gone just yet for Xenex. But looking like they want to try and go for that 10-5 scoreline. I think 10-5 at the moment at this point could be you know, still very competitive score, especially on the T side of Mirage. I think CX, they're going to be happy to even down to get this far, considering they were so very locked out of it. But Xenex, they're going to keep on fighting, they're going to keep on swinging and try and make the best possible half that they can out of this one. As you say, Josh still just staring dead set into a smoke that is going to pop. Liam toying with the idea of aggression over on towards the B side of Axe. keeps on pushing. Then the wall. One for one trades left, right and center. Liam going to drop the bomb as well. Yeah, that is so huge as he finds these frags very easily. CX. Being able to do the work. Playing around the smoke as well. Josh with the spray down. Could be out of range. Just comes in with one. But that's all he's going to get. Filler will trade that back. The frag that really stuns the throw CX into this round as he just keeps linking them together as well. Sure, the bomb is in their control. But left in this 2 versus 2, there is a possible chance. They have nades. Meanwhile, CX have nothing to play with. They find that frag on towards Resu. It becomes a very easily doable situation. Hawkins needs to be ever so careful. Rezu, if they're ready and waiting, but Hawkins, he finds himself the flick. That could be enough. It could be ended right here, right now. Liam got a peek on out with an idiot. He's quickly met with a firebomb explosion. Unfortunately for him, there is no wacky speech that he can come up with. He isn't going to be preaching how he's become one with the fire, how he's been molded by the flame. Instead, he's going to be there to hold an angle. He's going to be the boring side of that story. 
because he's just a passerby, a spectator in this round. He is done. He is dusted. This is a 10 5 half guaranteed. 30 seconds on the clock. He has his work cut out for him now. And they're not giving him the pick. He does have control of the bomb at least, but he's so concerned about underpass that he has to back off. And that's where things get rougher and rougher by the second. They have the utility. They're going to begin their push. He does find that first flick, however, looking for a second. But can they back off? Do they have the utility to make it work? He misses the shot on the cross. This is where it could end. Yeah, very awkward. They have to commit to the plant as well. He is going to try and reposition. Looks like he might try and go over towards Forest. Nate goes through, actually just sticking towards the bomb site. Liam, coming with the AK. So his head gets the connect as well. So close to finding that frag. That would have been massive if he could have done a damage. Backs off towards Forest now. Just going to be playing by the bench. Seems that Hawkins was unaware of where Liam was coming from all of a sudden. And Liam <laughs> finds the frag. So they end it at 6 9 half. I don't know how Hawkins didn't know what was going on there. It felt like such a round that was ripe for the picking by Xenix. But then Hawkins goes, you know what, boys? He's not coming from apps. He's, he's coming from market instead. I guess Professor Hawkins isn't as smart as I thought. Yeah, including these to return back to school because that right there is a big blunder to make and loses them that 10 5 opportunity. But hey ho, 9 6, fairly standard on Mirage. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Yeah, good play. Nicely done. Obviously for Xenix as well. It's very, very good on their behalf because they're a team that usually has struggles. They have internal issues on their team half. But didn't go that way. It looked good, it looked fairly fresh. And now in their TT half, where they usually excel, let's see if it's going to be the same old story. If they're going to lock things down, come up with some massive frags, is it will be that burst towards the A bomb site. Flashbang goes over, prime themselves up, smokes go through, and now they explode out. Can they find the frag though? Filler, watching the cross, will be forced back off the back of the flashbang. And they're just going to be pushing into them as well, trying to make the situation even easier. Possibly. We'll find that man advantage, and Josh is just going to be doing it all for them. A double kill for him. As he wipes his way into this round, transitioning now back towards Rezu though as he finds himself a quick fading frag on towards Duck and everything is just going one clear direction. CEX right now because we're looking at NK just kind of going, boys, where's my teammates at? Duck in a corner trying to save but Josh is going to hunt him down. A quadra kill for him in that round. The CX, they take it 7-9. to nine. They're looking to equalize and this should be fairly easy for them. Yeah, this is looking good. They're actually getting a fairly effective display right now and if they can go their way through the worrying factor is though Xenix right now from what we've seen in the past they are a team that can somehow just come out huge with I'm just gonna deagle deagle 3k here I'm just gonna do this here when they're on these eco rounds you know that sure they're going for a bit of a force buy into this because they can they know they're still gonna get the buyout right but that's where they have these weird moments of individual greatness if we see some of that coming out I am scared for CX because that reset would be unreal yeah, it could be very concerning, but it comes down to really just adding a bit of a firework into the round, which uh, can be expected at times, but also it's still hard to come by. So a bit of hope, a bit of faith. Which one is going to come up trumps though? So far, it seems like a bomb plant for CX. It seems like control. Then it's, they're just going, you know what? We've got a Kevlar. We've got a kit. Let's back off here. Let's use this in on next round. Otherwise, we're going to be left with nothing. We're going to be left with bare bones pistols. So this is good from them, at least. Yeah, this is nice. Obviously, this is the thing now in this 5 versus 4. They might ask for some work. I'm not really going their way, though. Liam picking them off. So, CX, everything they need to do in this round has gone their way. They haven't got as much capture as you'd want them to, right? Obviously, those SMGs you want to try and hunt a little bit. There's still three players left alive. That's basically three money bags running around the map. If you can find those kills with the SMGs, you just get yourself a little bit of extra money to play with. So, Resu, good hunt there. We'll find Duck. Getting ever closer to equalising the scoreline at 9-9. Can oh. Xenix get those weapons back there? That's when it gets scary. Yeah, for sure. But I think in this round, it's just, the, the equalisation is pretty much done and dusted, right? They lost everything yeah. we spoke so dearly about. All that Kevlar, all those kits, you know, everything they had to make this round competitive is in the bin. So, a bit of helmet on towards filler. Single piece of Kevlar on towards NK. Does that really change anything? I don't know. It depends if we're going to see some, some wacky USP magic. But there aren't even any deagles. There aren't even any quick longer range headshots. So it's just uncontrollable aggression now that ZX are going to try and throw to the face of CX. But CX, they're playing their cards right. They've decided, let's just all in towards A. It's the most favoured site for us when we have all of this advantage. ZX, the retake of this should be pretty darn dusted. It's true. They should easily be able to just work their way through, shut it down very simply. You can see they're going to go for this double backstab, right? They're going to go for the flank here, but it's not going to work out that well. It's not easy for them up against this improved arsenal they have on the side of CX. Opener goes their way. They are going to be able to eliminate filler. You can see now Hawkins approaching as well. Should be a simple double kill for him, but actually NK proved too much for him to find that frag. Yeah, well, it's something for the bank of Xenex, but... 
I don't know, I'm, I'm not the man of faith right now. I'm looking for the damage more than anything else. MK doesn't know how to spray an AK-47, and he's going to get punished off the back of that as Brody C is going to backstab him. And it just presents that awful predicament now where these pistols require headshots. Because even if someone has their back turned, they can tap for that head, but if they miss a single whiff, the guy's just going to turn around and one-tap you and make you look a fool. Yeah, so, 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 so it's just fun, those frags. Very simply locks things down. Easily duck as well though, gonna come out with a 2k towards the end of that. Not really what you'd expect him to achieve, but goes on and does it anyway, so fair play. 99 school line though, the next they can afford to buy in this round. I have a little bit less of money on a few players here and there, you know, looking at the famous on towards Hawkins, but Famous isn't anything to be too upset about. It's still a very, very strong and competitive rifle. He gets you guilty off the back of making that lesser choice. So, all in all, Zenex, this is their time to be competitive. If they want to show up, now is it. Otherwise, CX, they will get themselves ahead in this matchup. You see Josh already toying with the idea of just trying to make some work over towards the speed start. Tries to get some early presence off the back of that frag grenade, but Muffin, he's clocked on this one. He doesn't jump up until the nade has already popped. Yeah, the nade's going to go off. So, obviously, it makes it a little bit harder. Oh, they hold back. Josh, early aggression towards underpass though. Going to be focusing towards window, having to find that opener. If he does get the kill on towards duck, they lose a little bit of information. Mid control is 100% seized. And it just makes their lives a little bit easier. But also those choke points are going to be where the main issues of confrontation will occur. They've got a lax control towards mid. They're not too bothered. They'll allow them to take mid control and then shut them down when they try and go for the first. Just like that. NK, elevated angle, fantastic battle towards Josh, but Liam is looking so powerful right now. Massive two for to try and trade back. Uh, hungry for a third one as well as he blows his teammate out of the server, but nevertheless, they're still in a great spot. Three versus two, they can get that bomb planted, and they're going to make it a three versus one as well. Brody C had to drop on Muffin, and it just falls on Hawkins. Yeah, leaves him in a very tough scenario yet again. CX, they edge themselves out, they take it 10 to 9. And now they're just pretty much going to go, okay, well, what do we do here? What's our response? This next round, this 20th? Realistically, they have a chance to just slap the next round a little bit. They can say, you're right, boys. You know what? We're just going to mess you, give you a bit of a, a slap here and there, and just show you who's boss. Because what can Zenix do? They can just try and go for the one taps with some deagles. Again, that's just another big ask. These players, they all have these clutch potential. They all have these moments that get themselves up there as going, oh, do you remember that guy you got one versus four with a deagle? It's all well and good, but that only happens once in a blue moon. It's true. You have those small moments of individual greatness that, in times, can be very useful, but right now, there's just not too much occurring. Well, size counts, Jackie. Yeah, man. You're not wrong. <laughs> Deagle's in play, obviously, for Xenex. Deco coming out. <laughs> Muffin's going to ruin the fun, don't he? Spoil sport. Absolute fun, Hoover. Oh, duck. Nice shot, though. We'll take down Rezu. You can feel the connect on that one. Yeah, already a nice little opening pick, but is it quickly going to be converted down as this push begins to set itself up? It's very slow and steady from CX, which you kind of have to admire the fact that they're not just going guns to the wall after losing one guy and realizing that, you know, instead the better approach is them just to play very, very smart, check their angles, make sure that no one's kind of hiding in a tight corner. Brody C gets himself not only one frag, but also an opportunity to punish Hawkins, who's just 17 HP on this B side. Yeah, he's low. He's not in a great spot. But the thing is, they're on a 4 vs 4 at the very least. They can always get that first trade. They're getting dropped now as the push comes through to the A bomb site. Liam has looked so, so good as he finds his own. Takes down NK. You can see the fire back on Filler right now. Muffin as well. Trying to work, actually. Oh, if we'd have got the follow up frag, could have left them in a 3 versus 1. That would have been massive. But it doesn't go that way. Hawkins from CT hammering down that trigger, trying to get the connect off. But it's just not working out. You know, leaving a bit of a predicament now for Philip because it was a decision to make, right? He can either try and have an impact with his AK-47, or he can withdraw from the situation and bring it into the next round. Same sort of storyline for Hawkins, except from it's less about saving immediately, it's about hunting, trying to get a frag, and then saving. Unfortunately, Philip decided for him. Same sort of thing again. Josh going to double up, spindling around the place, looking stairs, looking CT. He's a madman. He's finding frags. 11-9. Yeah, he's looking good. But... As you said, 11-9 is going to be the scoreline, but finally they have cash once more on Xenix. The AWP does come out as well on Duck. We know how efficient he can be. He is that prolific fragger. He can get the openers. He can create those small cracks that allow him to do so much more into the round. But when there's a fast play going out towards the A-bomb site, is he going to be ready for it? Does get the first one on towards Liam. Hungry for more as well. He will get tagged down, but look, Astro, elevated angle. Had the high ground. It's maxed down NK. Had the high ground, both physically and morally at this point, as he's just making it work with these peaks. 
Josh trying to work out towards Ramp does decide to back off though, and CX, another good decision from them. They know full well that Xenex are just going to go for this instantaneous quick rotate. So what do they do? They go, okay, right, let's back off for a second, let's withdraw, let's make them think. They're banking on the fact that such a new team, such as Xenex, are going to overthink this scenario. They're going to go, okay, boys, we need to be careful, we need to go for this ballsy play. And when they do, CX are going to be there, trap laid, ready to strike. Rezu just walking outside, this is so, so smart. Will rattle down the trigger, finds a headshot off on towards Pillar though. Three more as well, there's the frag. Hawkins will take down Resu. Still struggling to actually do the work here. Packed in the back. Let's survive at this point, trying to go for the jiggle pick up. Will be eliminated in the end by Josh and it falls into a 2 versus 3. There's a headshot connect from Muffin though. Now, back into a 2 versus 2. It's fair game as the approach comes out towards the yeah, bomb site. Molotov will go through, ready to Holding the angle, rattling down, eliminates Muffin. Duck, close range, feeling confident. Struggling to find a frag though. And Brody C picks it off. It's got to be awkward when you nearly die to his teammate's Molotov because he throws one right at you. On your head. Molotov hat. Yeah, interesting choice of a uh, location for that. I think that was supposed to be going towards CT, but fell a little short, so he needs to work on his accuracy a little bit. Doesn't want to get it all over the place. 12 to 9, however, at least. And yeah, for Xenix, it's getting rough and rough about a second, right? You have to look at their kind of brittle economy. It's pistols. It's the Eagles said again. They have a lot more Kevlar behind it, which opens up a very real opportunity if they can gain a rifle. But it's such a big ask because the way CX are approaching these rounds is smarter and smarter by the second. They've gone away from grouping up as a five and allowing that window opportunity for Xenex just to get a few double kills here and there with a 5-7 or a few one taps with a deagle. Instead, they're playing almost like a default, which is always standard, but it's the right way of approaching the situation because they get all of these individual peaks. Brody and Rezu both hit their shots. They both get frags. Yeah, this is very easy right now. Everyone's just peeking, playing with their hands so simply. And they're able to just knock them down. They really can't do too much here at all. Left with these three players now with the Deagles. A couple of measly pistols up against the vastly overpowered rounds. Oh. Of CX. Don't imagine they'll achieve anything. Resu will take down Muffin as well. There's NK pulling on the trigger. We'll kill Liam. But that should basically be the end of it. Yeah, NK pretty much just denying the strike, but not really pulling away the strings of a spare because. Realistically speaking, now they get the bomb plant down, they just hold this site. NK's going to be going, you know what, we could just try and save this rifle. He knows that he can't really do too much with it otherwise. So yeah, it's just about the spare mentality for CX more than anything else. And 13-9 to 9 is a very, very strong scoring for them. They're just three rounds away from shutting down this first map, locking it up. And, and then it brings us onto that second map of train, which is an iffy one. We'll get there when we get to it. But yeah, at the same time, it's looking good for CX. Yeah, CX look on point. They've had a few very good rounds, but... Cheeky angle, come out. Well done, John. Now then. I don't know, CX looking like they're shutting the sound. What's weird for me as well, right, is Xenex... Mirage has been a map they've always been very strong on. They've beat so many teams on Mirage. You kind of just respect that Mirage out. But now it's just not working out at all. They have no answers. They have no idea, it seems. Now they're on their CPR. They're just getting overwhelmed by CX of all teams as well. CX isn't one that I'd say would be the team to be like, no, we're better than your Mirage. I feel like, you know, I look at the way certain rounds have worked and the way the, the eco round mentality has been played, but it's not just eco rounds if you think about it. That CX have slowed things down and played very passively. It's a lot of rounds in general, which maybe is the, the trigger point for Xenix. It's maybe where they're going, you know what, why are not CX giving us anything? Why are they not peeking us? Why are they waiting? Who knows? Bots are being pressed, issues are being found, but Doc, an opening frag on towards Josh at least. Yeah, at least there's something to try and give them a little bit to work with into this. Still need to do so much more though. Holding back, obviously the double up set up between NK and Dark could be the game changer. You have so much more capability in terms of taking the range fight. You can try and shut down your position a little bit easier. They are going to be setting up for what looks to be a late run team. Yeah, if they get themselves on towards B, shut down that distance, then it would be pretty good for CX, but they have some roadblocks to deal with, including still the double up setup of Xenex. They do look for those frags. Liam, of course, will try and draw players over towards A. He's the kind of the man that says, hey, look at me, guys, I'm over here. I want your, your presence. Could also find a pick as well, which would be very, very helpful, especially in the retake scenario when they eventually do rotate. But for now, he's just pushing in dry to two players, which Filler is holding that angle. That should be a headshot for him. So it shall be. Yeah, Liam getting taken down. It was good for Xenex, actually. This could be their attempt round on the board. Duck fires back to kill Resu. Brody C with the instant trade, though. Now, they are outnumbered 2-1, to one, but they do have control of the site, and their angles are being covered. 
Astro as well. He's in a good spot to try and utilize that orb. He just needs to land the shots. Has to be pitch perfect for him now, waiting for the push to come in. So that once he knows that's coming, he'll be a lot more confident, but he misses the first shot. That's tough for him now, because now he knows there's a player there. He's so much onto the throw you see who's trying to do the work towards sight, but it all crumbles to pieces. Xenex, they're keeping it alive. They're gonna get themselves their tenth round on the board. They get to pick up a whole lot of weaponry, keep the double up set up and play. So everything valuable to them, they hold close to their chest. Anything else, they disperse. Yeah, they tried their hardest. They were able to do some work, but it is not going to be enough. Now, with Xenex being able to get round 10 on the board, this sets them up to, okay, could this be breaking point? Is this where they actually switch things up now? Obviously, double up set up, it wasn't even utilized as much as we, we can expect to see it coming into effect. So definitely more potential from them. Meanwhile, for CX, though, they have an abundance of money. It's crazy to think how much money they actually still have left in the bank. So the buyers will be working their way through. They can afford to lose these rounds. Yeah, they're not even at breaking point, you know, in terms of remotely close to it. You're looking at $14,000 on Astro. That's a lot of money for a team to play with. And it's not like that's kind of not spread amongst a lot of players. Yes, you've got Josh who's low, and he's going to be the man to kind of have to get bored up a fair bit. But for the most part, CX, they're going to be comfortable. They're not going to be sitting there worrying. It's Xenix on the flip side who are going to be worrying. Another pause though, of course. I think, I'm looking at Xenix and go, double up setups are great. If they can keep making it work, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. But it's only going to last for a set amount of rounds. CX, if they go back to not even facing BFs, not allowing Josh to open up the other round like the way he did, then things change. Because bear in mind, the only rounds that Xenix have picked up on this city side really have been when they've been gifted either that first pick or someone has gone absolutely huge. Yeah, that is true. There has been a lot on the line for Wilman. Thing is though, NK trying to go for the peak with the AWP at first. Astro's there. If he goes back for the face, Astro should truly win this. We'll do so. Smites him down. Nice little opening for KCX, and this time it sways their way. Now we look to see exactly what Josh is able to do from underpass. He's got two players, two positions. Who does he want to strike towards? He knows that he can kind of give a quick smack over towards window and that could block someone off position, but also short as well. That's a much more threatening one. Because if that push does come in, he could lose his head. Especially with the boost coming from Doc, I like this. This is different, this is fresh. But, will he get anything done? Is he even going to spot a player? Because bear in mind, Josh, well, he's just around a very crucial model. As it does go down, Duck, very high up right now. Eagle eyed as he scopes around, finding that kill on towards Josh. Took nine damage, but got out of there before anything worse could happen. Now the push comes out towards the A bomb side. They realize it's time now, we have to strike. Execute order 66. Ready and waiting for boys to follow that order. So far, so good. Just another pick for Astro. Really doing so much in terms of the earlier round presence, but then the rest of his team now, they have to pick it up a bit. They have to step up because they're the ones with the rifles. Feel it straight through the crack of the smoke will be able to punish Liam, denying that early bomb plant. The problem here, time, it's on Xenix's side. They're in a three versus three. This gives them the opportunity to set themselves up with these boosts, get the information, go for those jump spots. Everything falls into place. The retake starts to unfold, working their way over. Very restricted it doesn't matter, he's charged away out onto the site. Somehow he finds those frags, it isn't traded out for so long. And now it falls into just Brody C, left in the one versus two. CX, they have lost this round. Xenex, what a crazy confidence play, worked out very well. Smart stuff. Well, we talked about this though, we said the rounds that Xenex win are big plays, someone stepping up to the plate. Well, walking through a smoke and picking up a double kill, one way to do it. Yeah, that was good. Nicely done. Obviously as well though, the cash of CX was still strong, so the buy will be coming out. Xenix, they also have money to play with, so the utility is there. They also have the AWP out still on Duck. Can they keep this up? This is what I'm wondering. Every time they secure these rounds, it feels like they're not always at 100% capacity. There's always a chance they're going to get reset. But now it finally looks like they might have got their foot on steady ground. Yeah, if they're on steady ground, that means only one thing. Rounds on the board. A much more close and contested scoreline. 13 11, just to the difference. The frag grenade gonna find itself in towards window. Not gonna affect Muffin, but does give him the inkling that someone is nearby, someone there looking for his head. Meanwhile, Duck is the man over towards short that really has to be watched upon. Because we're gonna be seeing Brody C and him bash very quickly in terms of aggression. Duck should be able to win this fight though with the ADP providing. He sets himself up correctly. The peak comes through, and there you have it. Duck with the headshot. Duck, fantastic way to open up the round. Hungry for more, but Josh had to drop on him. And we'll put him down. No 
no chance of achieving anything else into the round. Brody C as well will follow up as he munches his way through. Muffin leaving it now on a four versus three. Already into this round. CX looking like they might have found control of the helm once again. So far, so good. They do have a man advantage. They will look to double up off the back of Brody C, but the concern here is Brody doesn't seem aware there's still a man towards short. Now that's problematic, because if we just see another push, another entry pick there, it pits us back to a 3 versus 3 where time will favour Xenix, because they will try and slow them down. They'll throw down these mortals, they'll force them out of position. The Simulsaur is all in break eight. He's actually whipping, usually stands in Liam's Molotov. Questionable stuff. The Hawkins does secure the trade at least, but now things are crumbling. Now things are falling apart. It's a 2 versus 2, sure, but they've lost the ability to fill up. They have to go for a quick aggressive play. Leave it a 1 versus 1 up against a man like Liam. He's just got to tap heads. Yeah, that was nicely done. He works his way into the fight. Obviously, 14 rounds now secured on the board. The reset comes out for Xenix, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't link the rounds together. They couldn't finally start to get themselves into a dominant position. And this is where you've really got to feel for them. Because CX, at this point, should secure number 15 already and get themselves set up to try and close this game out on map one. <laughs> not, not without NK Taylor. Ooh. There's two. Can you look for a third? So far, getting pretty damn close. Bear in mind, Hawkins is the man from above as well. He finds himself just another. Perhaps is the pistol round beginning to show. Brody C finally picks up one, looks to go in for a double dip on towards a second. But even he's having a bit of a man now, whips out his side arm, tries to fight and equally foot it. But no, it's going to be NK with the Deagle to pierce open that round and USPs to end it. Why does he even buy a gun? You might as well just use your Deagle, apparently. Apparently, I mean, it's, the thing about NK is he just does it though, that's the thing. It's just, just rounds that happens. It's like almost become a standard for him now. He just, at some point in a game or two, in a series, you'll just see NK get a, a, a 4 kill or a 3k with, with headshots, a with a D. Every time. Yeah. It's like CX Atlanta in fairness in the line finals. They could only get kills with Tech Knights. Pistols. What do you know? Obviously, NK now playing from Sandwich, waiting for this push to come out. The explosion on towards the bomb site. CX, their hands are tired at this point. They don't have much to play with. They just have to charge their way in, and they're getting rattled down. They do find some frags, but they're going to get finished off in the end by Muffin, firing his rage upon them, tying things up. So close now to getting that 14 14 to alone. Just to rock a reality here with me for a second. CX, they go into this round. They drop out of this round as well. They're left with pretty bare bones money. That's if they choose to invest into this one which they almost certainly will. Off the back of that, Xenix, not only 14-14, they get themselves onto match point. That right there means that Xenix, off the back of a brutal mistake from CX and a big play from NK, could win this match. Yeah, it's very true. If they pick up this round, they're going to be projecting themselves ahead. They could actually close it out. And that just shows how important it is to have those players that can have just small moments of greatness. Josh going to be lurching in the shadows of Underpass yet again. The same old angle, different weaponry, but the same story as well because you've got the CT man on towards short, the CT man in window. This setup, I'm, I'm liking it from Xenix so far because we've seen identical rounds, literally from both of these teams. And every single time we saw this exact same setup, Xenix, they took the win. Liam this time is going to be able to shut down NK, but not without taking damage. 14 HP is all that he has left. Yeah, that nade going over. Tries to draw them back. No. There's Josh, repositions here. You can see the rest of his teammates as well, edging in, hoping this is where they can reset their next, get themselves up to that 15 scoreline. Slow approach through. Muffin on the big frag the back bang. We'll find the frag towards Josh, equalizing it 4-4. Four, four. That's exactly how they needed to approach this. If they can keep this going, then we're looking good. Back towards the Zenex side. Duck going to hold that little almost pixel crevice, waiting to see if there's any presence to be garnered by Astro or Liam. Bear in mind, if they walk in together here at collaterals, mm, certainly other cards. If not, a Molotov will still block them off. There's no way Liam can even afford to remotely choose to run through that. Which yet again is the delaying factor for Xenix. They are controlling the clock at this point as Duck takes down Brody C, waits for the second to push on through. They're completely blind. A deer in headlights, quite literally speaking. He's still waiting, still searching. They're walking right into his arms. So easy for these frags to be locked up at this point. Exactly. Trying to fight his way through, but it just cannot happen. Gotta be feeling for CX right now. Mm. One big play. Give Senex what could be their match point. It, it will be their match point. Unless we see CX now whip out the Eagles as well and do the exact same thing and kind of bring in some repetition, then yeah, 15 14. It's gotta go one or two ways. And that's the thing, at this point, it seems like it is essentially done and dusted. Xenex. They go in, they get that eco round, they now link it up, 
you get themselves this round on the board, you have economy to play, if you've got the warp out, everyone's sword duck, everyone's happy, everyone's feeling it, keep the pain train flowing, lock it out, get yourself this match point here, and just close the game out, and it's very possible. Tough times. Certainly has been a bit of a pause though, and I think we can see why. CX, they don't want to lose this, but we've got about 10 seconds or so left on that timer. Is going to be kicking in any second now, and that means it's sh sh pretty, pretty much showtime for the CX lineup. And Denix, they're going to look to really just bash this one home. They have everything they need off them as well. Their money is flowing. Yeah, Denix should just be locking it down here, just tearing their way through them. Not really allowing CX to find too much, obviously. As they set themselves up though, the smokes will be going out. CX starts to make their approach. But look at the aggression on display here as well from Xenex. So confident as they just make the plays. They know what they want to do and they're just going to take the fight. So comfortable at this point. Philip just going to be there towards ramp. Astro Liam are going to eventually walk through this smoke, which risky decision. It's even going to fade for them. Well, let's see how this one is going to go. Searching for those headshots quick and mobile now at the end of the game. They're completely blind. Phil are going to find the first. Waiting still towards Shadow Peaks and out. MK, you will be there to much more be the actor. Pulling the strings of this team. The fans are all coming in. And it's a clean of the house for Xenex. 15 14. An easy round for them. Simply put. Yeah, very simply done. Obviously, that's the thing. Up against that eco, they had the advantage in terms of firepower. They knew how to utilize those weapons, and they just teared through everyone. There was no chance for CX to anything there, especially towards the end. Great spray down coming through, just dispatching everyone on the side. Now then, CX, are they going to be able to take it into OT? This is the round they need to prove. If so, they have to go massive here. They have weapons back on their side. They have economy to play with. Can they pull something out of the bag? It's it's 50-50, right? And we, we kind of look towards them and go, okay, are you going to bring something fresh to the table? And right now, it looks like it's the same old thing. Let's just try and go out towards they had the final last hurrah. The problem with this is, do they expect Phyllis position? Do they expect the crossfire being held? So far, it doesn't seem it because that Molotov blocks Rezzy off. That's eventually going to go. And now it's predictably known that he's going to face that. Phyllis, free fires, finds it's a one. Liam is going to find it's all the trade. Spins around. Brody, see there, the support. That's a double kill for them. But Muffet trading the AWP of NK as well. Look at the HP off this TSA. One HP on Liam. Brody, he's not quite low, sure, he's on actually maximum HP, but even then, this is tough. Two versus three, got a minute on the clock to play with, but the CT side have so much time to set up these flanks. Look right now at the position coming in from our main man, Muffin. Liam, though, does have the drop over by CT. He is going to try and find those frags. He rattles down, but can't quite connect it. Brody C, trying to bait them in as well with the plant noise. As they back off, it seems like they know they will just rotate off and go towards the deep They can rank the risk. Probably the best decision they can make, but will they get away with a retake or not in terms of denying it? A whole different question indeed. Flash is going to go in towards market, just making sure that it's shut down any quick rotate that is coming in. But it's going to be coming in from short, which I like this. I think short, right? They just want to play distance. They want to make sure that they get angles they can play together. They've then got the support as well coming in from maps. If they can just delete Liam straight away with a, off the back of a simple frag grenade and Molotov that both Muffin and NK possess, it's a three versus one. It's very true. Let's see if that will actually come into effect. And a peek goes through from Brody C. Nice headshot on towards NK. Muffin burning Liam to a crisp. Muffin finds the frag. The defuse comes in. Xenex, they do close it out with a 16 to 14 scoreline. But the bitter end. Literally, you, you couldn't be saying... There are no words to describe CX right now, really.